masking in Lightroom allows you to take a raw photo that looks like this and turn it into this. Masking in Lightroom is so great because it allows you to make specific changes to certain areas in your photograph without changing the entire photograph. We can modify our light, color, effects, and detail in specific regions of a photograph. Let's dive into this example. So once again, this is a, a processed image and you can see all of the masks that have been applied and without the masks, the photo looks like this. This was the raw image that was captured. And then after processing, huge difference, <laughs> huge difference. So, and we did this all with masking and there are some global edits in here. So let's look at another image. So this is a completely raw image, hasn't been touched at all yet. And you can see that we are in our masking segment here. These are our global edits, crop, healing, and masks and we have our create new masks and look at all the options we have we can select subject select sky select background or we can create custom max masks by selecting an object brush linear gradient radial gradient or a range of color and luminance i'm not going to get into the subject mask right now because that's more for portrait photography and i do have a video on masking and portraits so you can check that out if you would like for now, let's look at selecting the sky, objects, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, and range. Background is also more of a portrait thing where you can select that's everything behind a person. So again, we probably won't get into the background too much. So let's go through masks one by one here. Sky, we've done this in other videos and it's pretty simple, but if you hit the sky mask, Lightroom is just going to select everything that it believes is the sky in your photo. And it did a pretty nice job here. So you have your sky selected, and it looks like it did a pretty nice job. It might have gone overboard a little bit here, but I don't think there's too much of a problem. So with our sky selected, then we can go in and do all of the edits that we would typically do globally. Sometimes the sky in your raw image just needs some fine tuning. It needs to have the highlights drop down. It needs a little less exposure maybe, or maybe some contrast added just to bring back some of the color and detail that was in the sky as you saw it. You can see that just by making those quick changes here, the sky just looks a little bit better than it did. And you can always click the little uh, eyeball icon next to it and turn off the mask to see how it looks. So this is how it started and, and that's how it finished in this example. So now let's look at a different one. Let's look at select object. This is pretty cool because this is a fairly new feature in Lightroom. So once we have our, our select object mask selected, then we can go in and draw or paint over an object that we would like to have selected. In this case, let's select this boat. And so let's just paint over the boat itself and then see if Lightroom is able to identify that boat and select it. Did a pretty nice job. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see that it selected some parts of the boat that are not attached to the boat. So to get rid of that, there's a subtract feature. So we would go into our mask and hit the subtract button here. Once again, have all of our same masking options. There are no limits to what you can do with your masking. So I'll keep things fairly basic here because in this case, we want to remove some of that masking that's around our, our boat. And so we would do that with a brush because then we can manually go in there and just say, I don't want this selected. And so then we select our brush and just paint that out. And then you'll find little details like this where you might want to remove some of this mask so it doesn't affect the water. Because really what we want to change is the brightness of the light on that ship. So when we have a pretty good idea that we have the mask removed that we like removed and we can go into our other settings and start to make some changes. We can increase the exposure. Uh, we might want to turn off that overlay so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Decrease the shadows on that ship. Might want to decrease the blacks a little bit. You can see already what a difference that makes to bring that boat really into the foreground. And if we turn off all of the masking that we've done so far, then it's gonna look like this. That was just the raw photograph and with two quick masks. Look what it's done. Okay, let's look at this photograph. Here's another one that doesn't have any masking applied to it so far, but I wanna show you 
radial. Radial gradient is probably the mask that you'll use the most. It's the one that I use the most, especially working in landscape photography, where you just have certain areas of a photograph that you want to you want to increase the exposure of or increase the temperature of. Radial gradient is vital in doing that. So we select our radial gradient tool, and then it's basically just circle. And then we just click and we draw our circle in the area that we want to modify. In this case, say I want to modify this area of water here, and maybe I want to hold the exposure up on there, I want to decrease the blacks a little bit there, and I want to warm it up. And so just like that, we've changed our water just using the radial gradient. So if we go before, better off, and after, turn it back on again, you can have an unlimited number of radial gradients. So if we wanted to do another radial gradient across this section that included all the boats, we can do that. And we have, the, we have you can see we have our outer circle and we have our inner circle. The inner circle is the feather. So if we bring that all the way out, look what it does. It's like, it actually, you can actually see the shape of the circle as, as you make your changes. And that's obviously extreme, but watch that circle as we decrease our feather and see what that does. And so it gives you unlimited control on areas that you can highlight and make modifications to. So a feather of zero and a feather of a hundred or somewhere in between whatever seems to fit the image that you are processing. In this case, I probably leave it somewhere around there. And then we can change our whites and our highlights just as we did earlier. We have all those same controls. So you can see in this photo, I've already added some, I added a radial, looks like I selected the sky and did an inverted radial. I can show you that. But let's say we wanted to select like just the green in this photograph. I could go to create mask, color range, and then hover over an area that I want to select, my green. So then you can see what it did is it selected everything in that photograph that has that same hue of green. So all, all of our, our plants and, uh, and succulents here and the palm tree fronds. And again, we have full control over the exposure just of that color. So we can increase the exposure on that color. We can pull up the lights, pull the lights down, same with the blacks. You can just see how much of a difference that makes when we're dealing with just that one single color. So let's look at luminance next. We have a luminance range. Instead of selecting a specific color, it selects a certain luminance or brightness in the photograph. So if we select our luminance range mask and then select an area of the photo that we want to modify, maybe we have you know, this, this bright white area, we only want to modify that. So we could select the luminance range there, then Lightroom is gonna select everything that matches that luminance. And then we have our slider range here where we can adjust, we can bring that down or we can bring that up and you can see with that overlay applied, you can see what is being selected. And maybe we just wanna modify it so that it's really only that super bright white area. So we could change our luminance range like that. And then, Maybe pull down our exposure a little bit just to kind of match the rest of the photograph. What do you do in a situation like this where you have the sky and you have an object, but the object is just really protruding into the sky kind of weird, you know, and, and you've got all these little intricate little spaces and you're just not sure how Lightroom is going to do it. Um, you can see I've already turned off some masks, but I just want to show you the process. So I go into create mask and, and select sky and Lightroom getting better and better and better at this. But look, you can see that it selected the sky pretty well, but it missed this area down here. And so this is where it might make sense to go in and, and you can add or subtract to a, to a mask that you've made. So you can hit add and then you could select color range and you can come in and select that part of the sky that it missed. Whatever that color is, that bluish type color is also everywhere else. So you can refine that if you like, and you can see if that works, kind of pull out that mask until it only selects what we want. And that is doing a pretty good job. So we just refine that down. And then in that case, we have a pretty good selection of the sky. Let's talk linear gradient. We have our create new mask and we have this linear gradient option here. So what this does is select a gradient as you pull up or down this mask. 
So you'd use one like this when you want to draw the eye into the middle of the photograph, maybe by just slowly darkening the foreground. So in this case, we would draw this veneer gradient like so, and then just pull the exposure down a little bit. And instead of dropping the exposure on this entire area, it just does it slowly as a gradient from the bottom up. Or you can do it, you can select a linear gradient and you can go from the top down. If you want it to stay perfectly horizontal, hold down shift and drag. Sometimes you might have, like the sun might be off camera just a little bit and you want to just make the light flow in from a certain angle, then you can do that. Make sure you check out this other video if you want to see how masking works with people and portrait photography. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again next time.